Metroid Prime 4 was a game that I was originally very excited to see back in 2017 when we had just a number against a background. Then in, uh, in, 20, in 2019, we had a great wake up call that Nintendo was completely scrapping the project and restarting all over again with Retro Studios. So now we are three years even after that point and we've had the latest Nintendo Direct and uh, recently and we still have yet to get more information on it. While they have acknowledged back in November or in, uh, back in 2021 the last Direct they had then with Metroid Dread, we, they they haven't really given much info. So while I'm while, while I'm excited about this game uh, just I mean based purely on nostalgia um, and the fact that Nintendo usually does a good job with their first party lineups, I also have some concern for this game. So mainly, the, the biggest question I have in my head is, how is Metroid Prime 4 going to justify its existence? So the last time we played Metroid Prime was in 2007, and Corruption had seemingly closed the books on its story set between Zero Mission and Samus Returns. Yes, I know this is the updated names of the first two games. Sue me. Um, so this game, is this game Metroid Prime 4, is it going to be a continuation of the Prime series? Or is it, go I mean, is it going to be a self-contained story after those three games? Or might this launch a whole new trilogy? These are questions that I've been personally thinking about since since Metroid Prime 4 first got announced in 2017. More often than not, stories like this that are that are just one-offs set years after the predecessors have closed the books on on their story. They, they don't usually have too much going in their favor, and in, in in my opinion, at least. Don't get me wrong. I I personally love Metroid. Um, I have per, I have copies of the original trilogy for the GameCube. Prime One, Prime Two, Corruption. I even have a collector's edition of Metroid Dread. I love Metroid. Um, my concern with this is different. I'm definitely going to buy Metroid Prime 4 on day one, just based on the name alone. However, I, I can't help worry, I, I can't help be concerned about what story they're going to tell after Corruption. Personally, I think a one and done story wouldn't exactly cut it. I personally would rather see a, a an entire trilogy, Metroid Primes 4, 5, and 6. Maybe it's not feasible because Metroid apparently doesn't sell very well. Hopefully the success of Dread is and, and can can push this this one forward. I personally can't help but think that a fourth installment alone might feel more like a little bit more of a and I might get backlash for this, but glorified DLC. If you know me personally, I, I like to listen to audiobooks while I'm doing mindless tasks like washing dishes or mowing the lawn. Um, whatever is just mindless. I, I love stories. A couple of years ago, I listened to the fourth Hunger Games, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes on Audible. The book promoted the main villain Snow from the original trilogy as the protagonist of this fourth book set about 50 years before Katniss's story. Spoiler alert. What I expected to find with this fourth Hunger Games book was uh, the rise of President Snow to power. And what I got was Snow's just basically very manipulative character. Uh, he's, a, he's a very controlling person and I just, I didn't really root for him. So there, so in reading the book, I thought to myself after that there was really no justification in having that story. The book, I mean, the book wasn't much more than a, than, than, than a cash grab. I didn't see how it progressed the story at all. So I think it personally could have been changed by making an entire trilogy of this and, and showing more slowly how, how he rose to power and at least at least if you can get behind some of his motives, then maybe you can empathize with the character a little better. It it seems more like this this fourth book was like book DLC that you can 
really just skip. Back to actual video games, sorry for the book analogy. Now you have a great example of a sequel that was published years later, uh, Metroid Dread, for example. We, we all thought that Fusion closed the books on, on that story, but hey, there apparently was more story to tell, and apparently it was really good, and we all, and we all loved it. Another thing that worked in Metroid Dread's favor was the fact that there were breadcrumbs along in Metroid Prime Corruption, and uh, uh, talking about Metroid Dread. Good job for the breadcrumbs there, Nintendo. A couple other sequels that came out not quite as late as Metroid Dread did, but from its last story, but it's significant enough to where they had significant amount of time between the, the, the sequels were Red Dead Redemption 2 and God of War. Both turned out to be phenomenal, phenomenal games, and, and a couple of them were, were nominated for Game of the Year. So kind of odd that I used a book example in a video game, in a video game uh, video, but the point was that the, the, the fourth book as a, as a one-off series just kind of gives me concern that, you know, how does it justify its existence? Now, while I'm writing the script for this video, I do see that Nintendo is hiring an environmental artist for Metroid Prime 4. And it looks like this person is going to be responsible for creating the backgrounds of this game. So, Retro is three years in the make of the game, and they are just now... And they, well, and they are now hiring for a, a background artist. Hmm. Well, I... I cannot help but wonder why they are hiring for this position. It it it, se it seems like Metroid Prime 4 is definitely going through hiccup after hiccup. So the bottom line is that there are things not going in Metroid Prime's Prime 4's favor uh, with the the scrap announcement in 2019, the lack of any real update since then for the past three years. And the fact that this game is a one-off sequel done more than 15 years after the last installment, and now they are and now they're hiring a new environmental background artist. There, there are things going for this 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 game, Metroid Prime 4, which is, um, I mean, the first the the first three games in and of itself in and of themselves were so great. I mean. It got everybody excited for a four on 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 the on the background in 2017. I think also the fact that they have not actually rushed this game to the market shows that they are trying to put as much time and effort as possible into making the sequel the best it possibly can be. So, you know, they I'm I don't know. I go back and forth. I'm very 50/50 on it. Could this be a good game? I really hope it is. Uh, I love Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime, uh, Metroid in general is my fourth favorite video game series of all time. Um, I'm, I'm rooting for this game. There's just things around this game that just don't give me a ton of hope for for this game. So I don't know. What do you What do you guys think? Are you Are you guys Are you guys worried for this game? Are you excited for it? Let me know in the comments below, and I want to know your opinion of where things are at with with this game. Well, that's it for this video, and until the next video, go hang out with your family, go study for your next exam, go get that gig, and the Datamer is out.